What's up everybody, Chris Fluck here. Today we're, we're kind of sticking with that two plus two equals five theme, right? Well, we're gonna start looking at some things out there in the world, out there in society, right? Out there in, uh, you know, with schools making decisions, kids making decisions, you know, physical activity is, is something that I feel like most parents would deem important, okay? And it took a research study where they added physical activity to schools five days a week, all right? Every day the kids did something, what did they see? They saw a healthier student population in both mind and body. They saw BMI scores reduced. They saw obese kids starting to get healthier, okay? I bring that up to people in the gym and they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? Kids are more active, they get healthier. It's like everybody knows this, but yet it doesn't get implemented. All right, now, when we have childhood obesity rising at the rates that it's rising, in 1970 it was 5%. 2018, 19%. From 2018 to 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic kind of disrupted society and our routines as a whole, we saw a 3.4% increase in childhood obesity. That rate was one and a half times greater than, the pre than over that same previous uh, year, two year span, all right? So we're seeing exponential growth in childhood obesity. And what are we doing about it? I take a look around and I talk to some parents, not seeing a whole lot. You know, the cost of sports is higher and that's causing some kids not to be as active anymore. Um, the, the, you know, PE programs, I talked to a few kids, they opted out of gym class because they play sports. So they, they had at that school, they have the ability to not even take gym. And if we don't take a look at that problem in childhood, we're gonna to continue to see a rise in type two diabetes over the whole population. Same thing could be said for hypertension, cardiovascular disease, depression, osteoarthritis, other bone de mineral density issues, and lastly, even some cancers are likely, or are greater, they occur, they occur more frequently in an obese body, we'll say, okay, now, what are we gonna do about this? Because if you are obese in childhood, you have a 55% chance of being obese in adolescence. If you're obese in adolescence, there's an 80% likelihood that you're gonna be obese into early adulthood. And then out of that 80% that's obese in early adulthood, 70% of them will remain that way beyond the age of 30. Obese children tend to become obese adults. And based off the numbers that I came across, seven out of 10, 70%, okay? That's a lot. If we need to, in order for us to fix, you know, the problem that we're seeing with those negative health effects that I brought up, the diabetes, the hypertension, the cardiovascular disease, the depression, right? If we wanna fix those things as a whole, right, in our adult population, I think we need to get to the kids first, right? We need to make sure that our children are physically active, are, are healthy, not only in mind, but in body. And in order for us to do that, we need to go to Slovenia, okay? Now, 48% of primary schools in Slovenia decided that we are going to partake in a study. This study added two to three days of additional physical activity into the normal routine. Basically what they did is they added on PE, they, they put it at the end of every day, right? So every class got five days of PE, and it, it, it resulted in four to four and a half hours of physical activity each and every week. 34,000 students took place in this study. They found the greatest benefit after three to four years. So this solution that they are proposing is not a quick fix, all right? What these schools did is they added PE and they started seeing drops in BMI. The, the population that saw the biggest gains, the biggest improvements, were the overweight and obese kids. With more physical activity in school, those kids started to get healthier, okay? And there's some science out there that supports it. Now, how do we get to the most kids? It has gotta be a school-based intervention because every kid goes to school. Not every kid is gonna play sports. Not every kid is gonna go to dance or karate or whatever it is, right? Not every kid is gonna come out to the farm here and, and exercise with me. So we have to make this a school-based intervention. Schools should not be cutting PE, they should be adding it. 
when we look at physical activity, it's not just about looking good and, and you know, looking healthy. There's physical activity, man, has been shown to improve cognitive performance and just overall development in school-age children. You know, this is something that we know. And if we could do this, you know, if we could do this at a young age, if we could, you know, introduce resistance training, introduce some fitness principles to these kids, then it's going to carry over, hopefully, for the entirety of their life. So if you're a parent out there, we need the schools to step up a little bit. We need to offer some more physical activity programs, all right? We, we maybe need to look at the schedule um, and say, like, there's a lot of gaps in our school schedule here. Can we get these kids moving more? Can we offer something? Can we do something, please? And then you just start listing it. I have the resources here. If you want to read it to yourself, send me a message, all right? I'll send you the studies. I'll send you what I have here. Send it to the school board. Send it to the parent, teacher, whatever you need to do, right? But it's time. If we want to fix these things, right? If we want to fix some of those negative health effects that are hitting our adult population pretty hard, the best way to combat it is obviously adding activity for them and trying to get a healthier lifestyle for them. But for future generations, we got to start getting our kids healthier. All right. And the Slovenia study proved that it can be done. A school-based intervention could change the lives of every single kid that walks through their doors. All right. Hope you guys like this episode. Again, if you have any questions, go to chrisflook.net. You can find my contact there. You could enter your email into our little box that says we have one heck of a newsletter. Every week I send out a newsletter on Sundays at 7.30 a.m. that touches on some of this stuff here. You do the podcast or blog article, expands on it a bit, but I try to open up the door you know, to, to some dialogue here and introduce some different ideas in the hopes you know, that we could, we could come to better uh, solutions and, and add some more positive things to the kids that we work with, okay? Again, Chris Fluke Podcast, it's on Apple. It's on Spotify you know, Google, wherever it may be, right? We're on YouTube. Like us, subscribe, give us a rating, give us a review. Let's boost this thing up a little bit. Um, and again, man, hope you guys have a great day. Peace, everybody.